Hi, I'm Tommy. I'm Nick. And we want to welcome you to the first round of the Summer Movie Smackdown. We have eight movies to discuss today, and they will be going head-to-head -head until we have one remaining that will make it into the final four. Yep. Shall we get started? Yeah. So, first up we have Paris, Texas versus Star Booty. Well, Paris, Texas is from 1984 and is directed by Vim Vendors and follows a man played by Harry Dean Stanton mm -hmm. who sort of walks out of the desert without a memory of who he is. His brother finds him mm -hmm. and brings him back home to his wife and then his nephew, who we find out is Harry Dean Stanton's son. Yeah. And then he sort of just starts to piece back his life that he has. Yeah, just basically follows Forgotten. his journey. Mm -hmm. So I really like this movie. Mm -hmm. I thought it was paced very well. Uh -huh. I thought that all of the shots were framed very well. Mm -hmm. um, even the score was really good. Yeah, it was, it was like, like a, a country, westerny Western yeah. kind of score. Mm -hmm. I thought it was structured perfectly because we spent enough time with only him by himself, and we mm -hmm. spent enough time with him and only his brother mm -hmm. and his son. And then you really get to spend probably the most time with Travis and his ex wife. Oh, yeah, and those like long mm -hmm. scenes yeah. that yeah. are pretty amazing. Yeah. Is there something, I don't know, is there something I can do for you? Natasha Kinski. Natasha Kinski? Yes. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. She has some amazing lines. Yeah. It's like chilling. Yeah. Some of the things that she says. Yeah. Um, she's probably the most interesting character mm -hmm. in the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, the character is full of interesting people, but she specifically is mm -hmm. like... I think there's sort of this mystery around her for so long that helps sort of yeah really build and then when you it was set up so well at the beginning mm -hmm. it was hard not to build empathy for like right. everyone involved yeah. so yeah what is revealed to have happened was much darker than i was expecting the writing is also very good there's a lot of sort of discussions about wanting to be seen or wanting to be heard and it's also about facing your mistakes and your past yeah. and moving forward and it's a flashback to the future. Yeah. Let's try to do a flashback to the future. A flashback to the future. And like how like memory, like you hold on to memories, mm -hmm. like you can't run away from them. Yeah. Like yeah. they'll always be a part of you. Yeah. And he's, he says that in the movie, he has to face his fears. And... Yeah. I'm afraid of walking away again. I'm afraid of what I might find. But I'm even more afraid of facing this fear. Even with Jane, her character, she basically like runs away from everything, yeah. but it all comes back to her. Mm -hmm. She had a very ingrid silhouette to her. She looked like Ingrid Bergman. She did. Yeah, and I liked how like the camera just lingered on her a lot. <clears throat> there was a lot of em up emotion behind her face, even mm -hmm. if it was just her looking and yeah. staring. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's talent. Um, but yeah, I think it was just a really introspective, beautiful movie. Yeah. They don't make them like this anymore. Well, no, but... Summer-wise, uh, it starts sort of summery out in the desert. But yeah, it's like hot. Yeah, it is revealed to take place in like November, and then there's yeah. Christmas decorations. So, uh, but that's But then again, it's... It's, it's still Texas, it's still summer, yeah. and it's California, so it's... Yeah. I would go four and a half. Almost five. Okay. I would go four, but if I rewatched it again, yeah. it could definitely go up. Potential to grow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Sorry. Why are you laughing? So, Paris, Texas is up against Star Booty. Star Booty follows um, RuPaul, who goes by the name of Star Booty. And she is on a mission to save her adopted niece. Cornisha. 
Cornisha from a villain called Annika Manners. <gasps> Annika Manners? My arch nemesis, Annika Manners? The same bitch who made my life a living hell at St. Tiffany's Orphanage? So Star Booty goes undercover as a prostitute with another agent named Paige Turner. Turner. Let's go. Um, and it's basically following them, trying to infiltrate Annika Manor's like, evil company called Mannerism Inc. If you're gonna go undercover as a whore, you've gotta be prepared to go all the way. Yeah. Then Very straightforward. It's it's a little convoluted, but it's um I thoroughly enjoyed Star Yeah. I thought it was too. hilarious. It was very fun. It was very funny, it was very camp. Mm -hmm. I was kinda of shocked at some of the things <laughs> that we R saw on unexpected, screen. Unexpected, yes. Yeah. And there was a lot of nudity uh -huh. that I didn't think because I, I think of RuPaul. Right. As like the sanitized like right. drag race version. Right. This, yeah, this was definitely uncensored RuPaul. Yeah. Which was very refreshing to see. It was refreshing. And Ru looked amazing. Oh, she looked amazing. And at the beginning, she's wearing this like. Red wig. Matrixy outfit. Uh -huh. Well, the she's whole opening like, sequence is amazing with all the split screens and. There's a lot of editing things going on. And RuPaul is just. Or Star Booty is like beating people up in the most There's a lot of sound effects. But you're not going into this expecting pair of stunts yeah. and But there are stunts. I mean there are stunts but not like perfect stunts. Yeah. You. I had the season one filter over it the whole time. Well at the beginning it was just on RuPaul. Right. There was only a filter on RuPaul's <laughs> face right. and then when it went to like any other character, nothing was there. <laughs> 17 vials of crack cocaine, 36 used dental dams, and a box of dead gerbils. Oh my. So it's really weird. But that uh, contributed to the camp factor. True. It's very self-aware. Like, it's, I don't know, it's just fun. It's very self-aware. Um, I laughed. A lot. A lot yeah. during this movie. Especially Paige Turner. And that ring is amazing. Oh wow. You I know, when my it. sister gave this to me for my birthday, I thought it was too whorish. But now that I'm going undercover as a hooker, it's perfect! Oh. And it's one of the best performances I've ever seen. It's incredible. Exactly! Exactly! The iconic, uh, this is it. This is it. This is it. I finally got this bitch. The Catitude verse. And the soundtrack is like genuinely good. <laughs> oh yeah, the first, <laughs> the first song. Uh, call me Star Booty or yeah. something. It's good. It's really good. Exactly. Candace Kane also gives a very good performance. She shows up in like the early season of Drag Race and like, who is this? Does she? Yeah. I, I she does like choreography in those. Oh, so. okay. But she was very funny. Anna Commander. She was very funny. Hey. Blow it out your ass. That's... <gasps> there, was a one, there was one long scene at the end where RuPaul is just sitting for like... It felt like 30 minutes. RuPaul was just sitting and they were like monologuing to each other. <laughs> my almond shaped eyes, my infectious laugh, my long leg. It was just like the world's longest maxi challenge. Pretty much. Yeah. It was like Drag Race on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Cornish. The squirrel Absolutely. laughing. It was hilarious. Like, yeah, it was just all around a good time. Yeah. I wish we would have bought that DVD we found for $50. Yeah, it's, it's selling for like 50 Truthfully, mm -hmm. I would give it a 3. I, I, <laughs> or honestly, a 3.5. Like, no, I agree with you. I, I, would, I would yeah. give it a 3 yeah. as well. It's, it's just good. Yeah, it's just good. <laughs> it's <laughs> just good. I don't it's know what to say. Good. I'm very upset that it's, it's up against Paris, up against Texas. Paris Texas. I mean, there could be an upset. I mean, I think it goes without saying that Paris, Texas is going to move forward, but... Yeah... I am sad to see Star Booty go. I first agree. battle. Cornisha! Well, that's it for the first battle. Paris, Texas has won. Bye, Star Booty. Bye, Star Booty. I can know. 
Next up we have Just Another Girl on the IRT versus And Then There Were None. Just Another Girl on the IRT was directed by Leslie Harris and is from 1992. It follows a young girl named Chantel. Yeah. Uh, she is like a high school senior mm. and she just is trying to go to college and become a doctor pretty much. Mm -hmm. She just wants to sort of break out of the situation she's in. She's like a very smart Mm -hmm. Student, very charismatic, very funny. Driven. Driven, like mm -hmm. she knows what she wants and she's like determined to get there. After graduation, I'm going straight to college, then med school. I got it all planned out. I ain't gonna never work for nobody. I'm gonna be my own boss. You watch. My life is gonna be way different. Something happens that derails that. Yep. And sort of deals with that. Yeah, and so it starts off pretty like vibrant mm -hmm. and a beat. <laughs> There's a lot of like fourth law breaking, right? Especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Lots of folks think Brooklyn girls are real tough. <laughs> I guess that's true. I let nobody mess with me, and I do what I want. <laughs> Win that one. Um, and that continues out throughout the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Occasionally. Yeah. Occasionally, It yeah. sort of fizzles out. Yeah. Um, which, it works sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think more so in the beginning parts of the movie. Mm -hmm. I think near the end it starts to get um, too much of a choice. Yeah, I think that could be said about the whole movie. I think mm -hmm. the first half is... And it just has like a really good energy to it. She is just a, like an incredibly likable character. Yeah. Um, and the performance is great. And then again, it takes this direction that was unexpected. And like, I think it does a good job of like, she wasn't expecting this to happen. Mm -hmm. And so it sort of throws us in with her. But then it, it just gets too heavy handed. The, the change in the, the mood mm -hmm. of the movie and the story did not reflect the chain, or did not reflect the um, the style of the movie. Mm -hmm. I think the the style of the movie should have changed near the end mm -hmm. when she was going through. And there's no spoilers, but where she was going through, what happens to her? Yeah. The soundtrack starts really good. It, it um, does. I really did like the soundtrack at the beginning. Yeah, but it sort of repeats the same songs too much. There's and one song that I counted, little girl. and it they played it three times. I don't like when movies have a soundtrack that is telling me what the characters are feeling on the screen, because I was watching it, and I knew exactly what she was feeling, and then the song would play, and then that would reinforce what she was feeling, but I already knew that. But the first half is so fun. Makes it up for the, the for but it, it really ends on a bad note. Like, the last 10 minutes are just like, it goes way, it's like a TV movie, like. Well, it wasn't shot well. No. Yeah, it's like, a, it was, yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened either. It was like they rushed it or yeah. something. Um, yeah, the shots are off. The performances get, ri get, they get crunchy, real rough. Especially yeah. from the one um, older lady. Yeah. Let's get her back to Tyrone's place first. Because she's going to be answering lots of questions at the hospital. She's in no condition to do that. Yeah, there was something off. About yeah. the entire like last thirty minutes. Yeah, I, I, I literally wrote down like in my notes, I'm confused yeah. because there was just so much happening. Yeah, just the execution of where it went. Right, because it was so good. Yeah, leading up to that. Yeah, I mean, I um, still really like it. I still, I, yeah, I do really like it, and that she's that performance is great. Summer wise, it it starts yeah. off pretty summery. Yeah, because I think school's starting. Near the end, it turns into like winter. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a ton of summer from it. I didn't either. But which again, that's something against the movie, just for this challenge specifically. Right. I would give it a three. 
I would give it a three as well. Next we have, and then there were none, this is directed by Renee Claire from 1945. And this follows ten strangers that get summoned to an island by an unknown person. Um, and then while they're there waiting for this host to come, they start getting killed mm. one by one. And then they're trying to figure out who did it, who is it, mm. who's the killer. Yeah. So it's an Agatha Christie, it's, you know, a whodunit mm -hmm. type story. Which we tend to enjoy. Yeah. At least I do. Yeah, I do like them. Um, this one... And it's a pretty well-known one. I don't know how to feel about this movie. I don't think it was very good, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. I think <clears throat> the setup is bad. Oh, really? Um, yeah. They're thrown in, and then they sit down, and then this record is played that's like... Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Mr. Owen, speaking. You are charged with the following crimes. Well, I think the setup is okay. It's the character introductions before they get there, yeah. or while they're getting there. Is, there's not much of anything. No. Ten was... Too many? Way too many. All of the actors sort of blend together. I mean, the only one that really stood out to me was there was a drunk doctor. I'm uh, Dr. Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And then there was like a younger prince and he had a mustache. Right. And then and like he doesn't last very long. The servants. This one also has them break the fourth wall. Oh yeah, at the beginning or something? Yeah, because they, they literally like turn the camera and say, I'm this person. I'm... Catch Quinn Cannon. How do you do, sir? I'm uh, Dr. Armstrong. My name's Lombard. Philip Lombard. I'm General Mandrake. I don't know who these people are. They're not very good. Mm -hmm. The characters are not distinguished. Yeah. All the deaths are like off screen. And not even just like they occur off screen. We don't even like see bodies. Right. So half the time I was like, I don't know who that person was. There wasn't really tension. I mean, I would, there wasn't tension. Well, there wasn't tension because we didn't care about these characters. Yeah. And it was just like... Because, there, again, there was too many. There was too many, and... It has this whole thing. It's like these little statues that keep going on. It's like, and then there's the song, which... Which is very clearly racist. Well, yes. Yeah. And also, it's very clear that the murders are happening based on the song. It takes them too long to figure that out. Yeah, and, and it's... It's just not fun. Uh, it just... It, it was very Glass Onion. As better. Better than Glass Onion. Meh. I don't really have a lot... It was just meh. I, I don't, don't have a lot to say about this. I movie. didn't get a ton of summer vibes from it either. It takes no. place on an island, but yeah. it's inside most of the time. Yeah. I agree. So... Two yeah. and a half. Yeah, two and a half. They could go low. It could go low. Just Another Girl versus And Then There Were None, what are we choosing? They both have problems, but Just Another Girl uh, is definitely what I'm going with. Yeah, even though it it's not fully set in summer, Just yeah. Another Girl is a better movie. Yeah. And a yes. more entertaining watch. Yes. For this specific challenge, so. Mm. And Then There Were None, I'm sorry, but you just didn't cut it. No, not good. Now, who do we suspect to be Mr. O? Mr. Lombard, one book. Mr. Blow, one book. <laughs> Dr. Armstrong, one book. Rogers, one book. It's great. See, I have to be in the kick. One vote. The next matchup is Swept Away versus Claire's Camera. So, first up, Swept Away. I had a dream. I was swept away. This is from 1974, directed by Lena Ortmuller. Um, and this follows a rich woman, and she rents out this luxurious yacht. And then she and 
a one of the yacht workers becomes stranded on an island and it follows their power struggles and their dynamic while they're on this island. I liked this. Okay. Uh, mostly. Well, I mm -hmm. loved this movie. Oh. I thought it was shot gorgeously. It is. It's very, um, very solar power vibes. Yeah, it's one of the most vibrant. It is. The, and the set is beautiful. Yeah, the, the water is very blue. Um, and all the shots of like the ocean and everything is beautiful. My favorite part, mm -hmm. just the two of them on like the raft boat. The little dinghy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that is when it's at its most entertaining and sort of its sharpest uh, writing wise. Con quel motorino. Lasci perdere, dato se capito che la non è mica pratico. Eh, ci rinunci per piacere, è così irritante. Eh, domani. I thought this movie handled its political discussions, gender politics, and um, power dynamics extremely well. Mm -hmm. um, I think Lena Wertheeler is knows exactly what movie she's making, knows exactly what she's trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, I think this movie can be read in multiple different ways, because um, first, in the beginning of the movie, you come to despise the leading lady, right? Um, and you're kind of rooting for um, the worker on this yacht. Mm -hmm. And he has communist sort of a communist background, right? He has a communist background. She's more of a rich, rich capitalist think, kind of, but like a liberal rich, capitalist. right? It does a really good job at switching who you're supposedly rooting for. But then it kind of comes back around at the end to where I really don't like any of these characters. Right, and I think that's I think that's what it does the best at is sort of this balance of they're both awful and annoying. Right. I didn't I was not rooting for either of them at any point in the movie. I thought Well, I wasn't necessarily rooting for them, right. but in my mind I was trying to latch on to one of them to um, put all of my ideas yeah. Like, I was trying to latch onto them as someone that I agree with. Right. But that's not what this movie is presenting. Right. And I think it does a good job of pointing that out. Right. That you can't do that. Right. Which, I find it refreshing when there's characters that are so dynamic and awful. Cafone! Vaffangolo! Maleducato! Yeah, there's no like moral righteousness in this movie. Right. It's all sort of pointing out hypocrisy of both of these characters, which I enjoyed. I my issue comes more in that I got tired of it after forty five or so minutes. It can I be think, hard to watch it sometimes, but I think that's the point. Right. I think just like both the characters and sort of these performances are too one note for too long that I was just I was checking out. Well, I disagree. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I thought the performances were really good. Yeah, I think they're good at what they're doing. It, I think it was just too much of the same for too long. She I mean, she screams a lot. And again, What the movie's trying to do is trying to make you uncomfortable and make you annoyed with these yes. characters. Right. But I'm okay with that to a certain extent. I, right. I, I like to be annoyed and little increments. Lena Wurtmuller, as we saw from her last movie, she has a good grasp of how to be vulgar in a way that is intentful and really just intelligent. Like she right. knows when to sort of push your buttons and yeah. uh, my buttons were pushed but I was like I seem to win. Oh, I will say that the score was really nice. So you have these characters who are screaming and being obnoxious at some points, and the score was the opposite of that. Yes. Well, I honestly, I we haven't seen the Madonna one, right? But I find it hard to see how 
I that th would cor or that would translate. Yeah, I think Madonna in this role sounds awful. Sounds horrible. She does look very much alike as yes. the character. Mostly in the hair. A little bit in the face too. A little bit in the face, yeah. Yeah. So what would you give this movie? I think I would go with a three. A three? A three. Okay, I would go with four and a half stars. I really loved it. Wow, I was not expecting that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Madonna. Swept away, swept away. Swept Away will be going up against Claire's Camera. Claire's Camera is from 2017 and is directed by Hong Sang Soo. And it follows Manny. It opens with her getting fired, mm -hmm. sort of mysteriously. Right. And she comes across Claire, mm -hmm. who is played by Isabel Bear. What's your name, anyway? My name is Claire. Mm -hmm. And what is yours? Nanhe. Nanhe. It's very conversational. Mm -hmm. um, that's sort of the Hong Sang Soo vibe. A lot of just people talking at tables, mm -hmm. um, which you have to be in the right mood for. Well, this one was really short. Very short. Um, so I didn't have a problem with that. And this one's more non-linear, so it's sort of chopped up and rearranged. And right. Try to do a flashback to the future. A flashback to the future. Yeah. Um, I think the conversations are, were, on a whole, pretty interesting. There's a lot of discussion about sort of being honest um, within, like, your work. Well, the discussions were, they weren't, it wasn't just like two people having a conversation. It felt like you were in that conversation. Right. So it wasn't like... Oh, I'm bored watching these people just sit at a table and talk. Right. And just like, oh, I want to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm sitting here watching these people in real life. I think a lot of his films are very quiet. And as a performer, Isabel, she just has a lot of presence. They took a photo of you. You are not the same person anymore. Oh, really? Yes. He, it sort of had an opposite effect where it kind of brought me out of it a little bit. But she, her character herself was quiet. And reserved. Yeah, so she's, I, a little kook, she's a little kooky though. Yeah, but I think that helps offset that a little bit. Yeah. Because she wasn't acting crazy. Yeah. Or doing anything wild. It was yeah. just her and she has she has this camera and she mm -hmm. takes pictures. And I make photos too with this. <laughs> so the pictures that she takes sort of helps Manny piece together. Piece together sort of the truth behind her firing. Why is he here? Do you know him? Oh, so, yes, I know him. Even though we're peeling back layers on why she's being fired, we're also learning more just about these characters themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I wish it was longer, mm -hmm. and I wish um, things would have wrapped up a little bit better, because it kind of ends, not abruptly, but it ends yeah. Randomly. Yeah, it's an unconventional, very unconventional structure to yeah. how you think the story would go. Which is nice, but I yeah. was into it so much yeah. that I wanted an extra 15-20 yeah. minutes with yeah. these characters. Yeah. It definitely just pops you in and pops you out. Yeah. I really enjoyed the big dog in it. Quel beau chien. Tu te reposes, hein? I would give it three and a half stars. Yeah, I would, I'm like all in between three and three and a half. Yeah. Um, so, around there somewhere. Yeah. So, Swept Away or Claire's Camera? I think Swept Away is definitely more into the summer vibe, especially with the water and things like that, and you definitely liked it. It's more the than... most summer you can possibly get out of a movie. Well, we'll talk about that. Um, I mean, I I would pick Swept Away. Over yeah, Claire's and um, sure. I don't. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight to the death for Claire's camera. Okay, so um, Swept Away is the winner. Yes. Okay. Based on summer vibes, that's and my love for and it. your love for it. But oh, bye, Claire's camera. Claire. Oh.
So. Oh! And lastly, we have Last Summer versus The Ambulance. Last Summer is from 1969 and is directed by Frank Perry, and it follows three teenagers on Fire Island who sort of form a bond over saving an injured seagull mm -hmm. on the beach. Another girl is introduced and things happen. I think this was a very atmospheric and engaging Film. Um, it sort of has an interesting structure in terms of like we're stuck with these three core characters for probably the first 40 minutes. I want that bird off the deck. I have people coming here for drinks. He's the ugliest thing I ever saw. I can't. And then Catherine Burns' character is introduced. Oh. What do you think you're doing to that bird? What are you doing to the bird? Well, she's interesting because she's. Uh, the complete opposite of this group yeah. of group of friends. Yeah. She's very nerdy and mm -hmm. awkward, and, and they're very sort of your stereotypical popular teenagers. Yeah. Oh. What's the matter? This isn't beer. It's truth serum. I mean, but they they each have but their they own have, yeah. special like background mm -hmm. and traumas that they've mm -hmm. gone through and are currently going through. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's really what the core of the movie is about. Sort of the different ways in which young people react to their traumatic experiences. Yeah. These three sort of are like acting out and they sort of bounce off each other in that. And then mm -hmm. Rhoda, who's Catherine Burns, mm -hmm. is very sort of internal. internal in the way that she's doing things. And she's a little closed off. Yeah. Their intentions for all of, all of them are very hard to understand throughout, which I think yeah. Helped and make it engaging, adding sort of this tension. I was like, should I be worried for her? Oh, no, that's fine. Oh. Hey, let's teach her. Now? No, starting tomorrow. You know, like it'll be our project for the week. I can tell by looking at her, it's going to take more than a week. It also does a good job of showing sort of the nasty side of summer, which is like mm -hmm. by like the end of July, it's just hot. Mm -hmm. And there's. Like, for them, there's nothing else to do but be on the beach, yeah. and they're just very, very tan and, like, sun-damaged, and sort of the way in which just excessive heat and being young and having all these things going on can just make you a little well, they're crazy. Well, bas they're basically, like, festering with their past trauma and mm -hmm. things that Current they're dealing trauma, with. Yeah. The performances were all great. They were all great. I think Catherine Burns is probably my favorite. And then my father said... Then my mother had swum out to this sandbar half a mile offshore and back without stopping to rest. And this man said that that was impossible. And my mother said that she could do it again anytime. Yeah, out of the group? Yeah, she's the character you're supposed to sort of identify with the most. Yeah. And then her and Barbara Hershey have like a good rapport with each other yeah. when they're throwing. Shady. Insults and shade shady. back against each other. Barbara Hershey is very shady. What are you doing to the bird? None of your damn business. Oh, go suck your mother's tit. Who the hell asked you? You've traumatized him. We've what? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to swim. Who Wasn't cares? You. you still here? Well, don't stand around and psychoanalyze him either. Oh! Ow! You freaking idiot! Hey, you break okay, the hell with you. It's only a joke! Hasn't she got a sense of humor? I certainly have a sense of humor. I write jokes in my column. I bet they're side splitting. All dirty old men look at girls in bikinis. My father isn't a dirty old man. He's only 38 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know they have a very high level of civilization in Cleveland, Ohio. Did you know that? Has a really nice late 60s, early 70s look to it too, which I, I'm, all, I'm just I was, a sucker for. I was gonna say that. The yeah. film looks really good. Yeah. And just the way Rhoda's relationship fluctuates with um, one of the boys mm -hmm. and how... Yeah, that, that's where it was really difficult to read sort of what was happening. What was happening, yeah. You have an unmapped face. An unmapped face? Mm -hmm. It doesn't come right out and say what's going to become of you. What would you give this movie? I would give it a four. I really enjoyed it, I thought. I mean, it's... It has stuck with me, I think about it. 
quite a bit. I think yeah. the end particularly has these very sort of striking images that uh, leave you feel you feel gross after. Yeah, um, I would also give this a four. Ah, love and mercy. And now we have the ambulance directed by Larry Cohen. This is from 1990. And this follows a comic book artist who meets a girl on the street and he's flirting with her and following her when she suddenly passes out for an unknown reason. And then an ambulance comes and picks her up. And so we're following this comic book artist trying to find this girl. She's nowhere to be found. She's not at the hospital. And so as we progress, we see that there's these ambulances that are picking multiple people up on the mm. streets. And so he's trying to find out what's happening. It's pretty convoluted. It's, it's, the plot is simple, yet extremely convoluted and dumb. Yeah. It's wacky. It's wacky. But it doesn't fully dive into its wackiness. No, um, it's, it feels like a sanitized version of an other films directed by Larry Cohen. I don't really understand what he was doing. <laughs> There's themes in this that are just... There's hints at themes. There's hints at themes that, and it doesn't go deep into them at yeah. all. Yeah, I think it could be really interesting in terms of like, sort of the way hospitals prey on the elderly. Yeah. Again, those are just like throwaway lines. So it was like, I think you're going here, but then it's like, no, you're just... Which, granted, a movie like this doesn't have to go into these themes, but we're presented with these themes. Yeah. And Larry Cohen is someone that does go deeper. And either needed to, to be fun but still try to say something or just be silly. Serious. Campy and crazy. Or, yeah, or yeah. campy. I will say it's a fun watch. It is, it is fun. It's very fun. A lot of the characters are very vibrant, like red buttons. What are you doing out of bed? My Jane Fonda workout. Um, the main girl opposite of the comic book artist is dry. She's very bland. And bland. With her Evermore braid. Yeah. Evermore. Uh, she, she was just fine. There was nothing really to her. She was a cop. I'm a police officer. I need help. I mean, this movie is entertaining enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, with every scene of the ambulance running people over. Yeah. Him flying down the street. It just did not fully work. No. Um, As a concept, it doesn't work. Yeah. As a movie. The reasoning behind the what the ambulance abducting these people. Oh, the last 30 minutes is stupid. It fell short. Yeah. It left a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. So, what would you give this movie? Two and a half. I would give it two and a half as well. The ambulance up against Last Summer, who's taking it? Last Summer. Yeah, Last Summer's With ease. Good. With ease. By a, a long margin. Yeah. yeah. So we have Paris, Texas versus Just Another Girl on the IRT. Yep. And Swept Away versus Last Summer. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start let's with... Let's narrow this down. Let's start with Paris, Texas versus Just Another Girl. We do not even need to discuss it. Paris, Texas is going. True. Yeah. Sorry, Just Another Girl. Paris, yes. Texas is just one of those movies where almost everything is perfect. Yeah. And next is Swept Away versus Last Summer. Mm -hmm. This one's going to be really hard because I love both these movies. I love one of them. And I would like to see both of these movies make it to the end. I know. Shantae, you both stay. Yes! <laughs> yes! So which one would you pick? I would pick Last Summer. I definitely liked that more than Swept Away. I would personally pick Swept Away. Mm -hmm. I like both of these movies. Yeah, so he I was... think Swept Away does a better job at invoking the summer spirit. Mm -hmm. All the themes that it has to offer are explored mm -hmm. in more interesting ways. But we also have to take into account that they're going up against Paris, Texas. Up against Paris, Texas, which do you think 
to has you, a better chance. Has a better chance of swept yeah. away. Okay. See, because to me, last summer does not have a chance to beat Paris, Texas. So we, therefore, we will go swept away. Perfect. Well, that works out for me. Okay, so now we have Paris, Texas versus swept away, and I'm all in on Paris, Texas winning. I'm all in on swept away winning. Well, we have to. This think is about this it. is this is my thing. This is a summer movie smackdown. Mm -hmm. Yes, Paris, Texas is hot, mm -hmm. but it's set in November. Right. Swept Away is summer throughout the entire run of the movie. Yes, but my Paris, Texas to me, I have it at four and a half. Swept Away, I have it at a three. And I have Swept Away at four and a half, and Paris, Texas at four. A four. And a half. So stay tuned for round two of the Summer Movie Smackdown, where we will be going through eight more movies and seeing what makes it to the end. And then in our final video of the Summer Movie Smackdown, we will reveal the final four and find the ultimate winner. Yep. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know which movie you want to make the top four out of this round. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.